Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So this question of cutoff in Markov chains is one that has occupied uh, me as well as uh, Jan and Eyal for some years. And now with uh, Jonathan joining in the fray, we have uh, another jump in the understanding of this. So please, Jonathan. Uh, so today I will be talking about joint work with Reedy Basso, who is also a PhD student in the statistics department of UC Berkeley and Yuval, about characterization of the cutoff phenomena in reversible Markov chains. Did you lose your microphone? I did. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the object we study uh, are reversible Markov chains, a finite state space we denote it by omega, irreducible, reversible, lazy ones. Uh, we denote the transition matrix by P, the stationary distribution by pi. Reversibility is just a condition that pi x p x y is equal to pi y p y x for every two states x y in the state space. And laziness is the condition that Pxx is at least a half for any state x. Uh, the notion of distance we consider is total variation, which by definition is a maximum over all sets, mu a minus mu a. Um, the uh, distance of x from stationarity time t, denoted by dtx, is just the distance of the distribution of the chain at time t started at x from pi. And then dt is the worst case distance at time t, which we just take maximum over all initial states x. And then the epsilon mixing time is just uh, denoted t mix epsilon, is just the minimum time t such that dt is at most epsilon. And when epsilon is equal to a quarter, we don't write it, which is standard notation. Uh, the phenomena we'll be talking about is the cutoff phenomena. Uh, so we consider a sequence of Markov chains, and we say that the sequence exhibits cutoff if the epsilon mixing time minus the 1 minus epsilon mixing time uh, is little o of the mixing time for any epsilon between 0 and a quarter. Uh, Wn is called a cutoff window if it's little o of the mixing time, and we can write the epsilon mixing time minus the 1 minus epsilon mixing time as some constant depending only on epsilon times the cutoff window for any epsilon between 0 and a quarter. So I'm saying a cutoff window because it's not uniquely defined, as one can readily see. Uh, so to see uh, in Graphically, what cutoff uh, sums to is just this picture of dt as a function of t, where n uh, is denoting the nth chain in the sequence. So there's an abrupt drop from nearly 1 to nearly 0 at a very small window around the mixing time. Uh, some historic background, uh, this was first identified for random transpositions by Diakonis and Shashani at 81, and then for random walk on the hypercube by David Aldos. Uh, many chains are believed to exhibit cutoff, but usually verifying it formally is difficult. And until a few years ago, there were just few examples which have been verified formally. Uh, the name was coined by uh, Aldos and Diakonis in their seminal 86 paper in which they raised the following question, which they refer to as the most interesting open problem, which is finding abstract conditions which are sufficient for the occurrence of the cutoff phenomena. So I'm going to uh, discuss now one necessary condition, but first I need to uh, make one definition. So lambda 2 is the largest non-trivial eigenvalue of p, meaning uh, smaller than 1. Uh, the spectral gap of the chain is just 1 minus lambda 2. And then the relaxation time is just defined to be the inverse of the spectral gap. 
So Paris 2004, the product condition, which from now on I'm going to abbreviate and write prod C, uh, which is the relaxation time being little o of the mixing time. So the name product condition comes from this equivalent uh, representation. Uh, is necessary for the occurrence of the cutoff phenomena in reversible Markov chains. Uh, unfortunately, it is not sufficient. So relevant examples were constructed by Aldos and Eagle Pack. So this uh, raises two questions. One of them is find uh, general families of Markov chains for which the product condition does uh, imply cutoff. And the second problem is find an additional condition C such that for reversible Markov chains, cutoff is actually equivalent to C and the product condition. So in our work, we make progress uh, in both fronts. So we do establish such a condition C, and we uh, show this for new family of Markov chains, namely weighted random work on trees. So excuse me for uh, the dark background. Uh, so this is Aldo's example for showing that uh, the product. You establish, you establish a sufficient and necessary condition? condition? Yeah. So uh, this is Aldo's uh, example for uh, showing that the product condition does not imply cutoff. So what we have here is a path of length 10n, and then we have two parallel paths. <laughs> then we have two parallel paths of length n each. Uh, we have a fixed bias towards the state y, which is given a non-lazy step, you move to the right or towards y, if you will, with probability two-thirds, and to the left with probability third, okay, given a non-lazy step. Uh, on the long path, th uh, the laziness probability is fixed as above, and along each of the paths, the laziness probability is fixed, but you have more chance to stay at the same position uh, along the top paths. path. Uh, OK, so first of all, the relaxation time is of order 1. So this can be seen uh, just because uh, in the Markov theoretical way, since this is an expander, the expansion is bounded from below. Uh, all the stationary measure is concentrated around y, hence uh, it's not hard to establish that the mixing time, so the distance from stationarity time t, is essentially the probability that y was still not hit by time t, and that the worst starting state is x. And then by considering the two cases in which the last exit out of z before we hit y was into that path or that path, one can show that the distance from stationarity is bounded away from 0 and 1 in these two choices of times, and there is no cutoff. So really, the issue here is that the heating time of y is not concentrated. And this leads to, not, to, to, do, to the sequence not having cutoff. Uh, OK, so uh, now I'm going to talk uh, beyond uh, the context of cutoff and just the context of uh, mixing. Uh, so the definition of heating time of a set A is just the first time t in which the chain belongs to the set A. Uh, so already in the middle of the 80s, uh, Aldos established <coughs> some relation between heating time of four sets and mixing. But th this was greatly refined by Paris and Susi, and then also independently by Oliveira. And they showed that for any uh, irreducible or reversible lazy Markov chain and any alpha between 0 and 1 half, the mixing time is up to an co a constant depending only on alpha but not on the chain uh, of order of TH alpha, where TH alpha is the worst expected heating time of a set of stationary measure at least alpha. So it's a worse couple in a sense. We look at the worst starting state and the worst set. Okay, and the case alpha equal uh, 
a, a half was conjectured by uh, Peres and proven uh, one year later by Griffith et al. So uh, in our work, we don't work exactly with this notion of worst set and uh, with expectation. We relate DT uh, more directly to uh, you know, kind of the same maximum you see over here, but we look, I thought I fixed that. There is a X mixing here, I'm sorry, at the tails of the distributions of the heating times rather than the expectation. And uh, we refine two in two ways, equation two. So first of all, we allow alpha also to be greater than one half. And uh, moreover, uh, we relate our notion of heating time of four set to T mix epsilon, not only to T mix of a quarter. And the relation we get is tied up to an absolute constant, which is independent of alpha and epsilon. Uh, so this raises a natural question. Uh, how come we were able to extend this beyond alpha equal half and previous results were only up to a parameter half. So this is because two may fail actually when you take alpha bigger than a half. So is, isn't it enough if I say that we have two clicks joined by an edge? I think that people... Only smart people can see this. <laughs> so imagine that what you're seeing is two clicks of size n uh, joined by a single edge. <laughs> and uh, actually, instead of uh, analyzing this example, which is already quite simple, we will analyze a degenerate example whose analysis is very similar, but the same conclusions will be drawn. So uh, our state space is two states, and we have a frog uh, and two lily pads, and our frog is quite content with uh, staying in its current lily pad. But in every time unit with probability one over n, it's, it uh, jumps to the next, uh, to the other lily pad. Then uh, deterministically, any set of uh, stationary measure greater than a half is hit at time zero in a very degenerate manner. But hitting time of any worse set of size uh, smaller or equal than a half, namely the lily pad that the frog did not uh, start at, uh, Eating it is hard and is essentially like mixing. Uh, moreover, uh, the spectral gap is uh, 2 over n, and the, mixing, the epsilon mixing time is determined by the relaxation time. So uh, to this raises two uh, 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 natural things. Uh, so one should expect two things, that any refinement of the result by Perez, Susi, and Oliveira should include the term of the form Tyrell log epsilon. And uh, this also shows that it's natural to consider uh, tails of the heating times rather than the expectations. If you want to talk about the epsilon mixing time and not just the mixing time. Uh, okay, now a little bit about relations between uh, heating times and cutoff. So this was already hinted in the literature and uh, most notably in the context of birth and death chains. So it turns out that for birth and death chains, concentration of heating times is uh, crucial. So what is known in that context is diaconis and sort of cost and showed this for separation cutoff and Ding, Lubetsky in Paris for total variation cutoff that the sequence of birth and death chains exhibit cutoff if and only if the product condition holds. Um, th there's only one way to draw them, so... Not anyone... So a birth and death chain uh, is just a chain in which if you have uh, n states, then you can label it 1 to n. And uh, PJI is bigger than zero if and only if uh, I minus J is smaller or equal than one. That's the definition of a birth and death chain. So 
you know, th this might be weighted. So one example can be a chain similar to Aldous' example, but now we don't take two parallel paths. Can be a two-third to the right and a third to the left. So this will uh, satisfy the product condition and thus will have cutoff. Okay, so we extend the result to a weighted nearest neighbor uh, random walk on trees. And uh, our result is, can be extended. So the, the tree structure can be relaxed and I hope to, to get to that later. So a more precise uh, version of our result is that for any uh, lazy Markov chain on a tree T that has at least three vertices, the epsilon mixing time minus the one minus epsilon mixing time is at most 30 uh, square root of uh, epsilon inverse times the geometric mean of the relaxation time and the mixing time. And uh, one can readily see that this implies that the product condition is equivalent to cutoff. And the cutoff window uh, is at most of length the geometric mean of the relaxation time and the mixing time. So uh, comparing this to previous results, then uh, we actually get a slight improvement in the rate of convergence and compared to birth and death chains. And uh, in that paper, Ding, Lubetsky, and Paris show that in certain cases, the length of the cutoff window is at least of order of the geometric mean of the relaxation time and the mixing time. Thus, one cannot get a great improvement over what we got. Dependence of the and the lower bound. Lower bound? In that, in the example. So uh, th this is, I think, theorem two or two point four, and it's only written like that. And I don't remember from the proof itself w what what was shown. But but the the method I think is similar, and you use a uh, one-sided Chebyshev inequality. So probably yeah, it's symmetric. So the lower bound, about the lower bound. What was the depends on epsilon in the lower bound? It made it no, okay, but it, if it was obtained by one-sided Chebyshev inequality, then it should be symmetric. I, I think it was symmetric. The, it was of this order. Saying, I mean, we, yeah, we had a one upside down bound, yeah. and you improved it one over square root, and I was uh, just wondering what's the Oh, oh, you mean, yeah. I, I don't remember, I, I'm sorry. It took me a while to understand the question. Did you, did you violate, you keep this uh, big omega notation in the paper? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I yet defined formally our notion of a uh, heating time of four sets. I just said that it's related to tails rather than expectations. Then, okay, it alpha is just an abbreviation for it alpha quarter. For a fixed initial state x, it alpha x of epsilon is the first time t in which any set of stationary measure at least alpha was not it by time t with probability at most epsilon. And then it alpha of epsilon would just be maximizing over the initial states. So I want to argue that this uh, can be related or compared to the mixing time in some sense. So one direction turns out to be uh, trivial. Uh, the probability to not hit a set by a certain time is at most the probability that the chain is not in it by that specific time. Well, a little algebra in the definition of the total variation distance tells you that this is at most pi of the complement of the set minus the total variation distance, worst case at time t. And again, definition chasing tells you that uh, this inequality uh, shows that hit 1 minus epsilon over 4 or 5 epsilon over 4 is at most the epsilon mixing time. So this gives one side. And in simple words, uh, in order to mix, the chain must first escape from small sets, more precisely with a sufficiently large probability. And we think of that as the first stage of mixing. 
And it turns out that, uh, loosely speaking, uh, at the second stage, the chain just mixes at the fastest possible rate up to a constant, which is governed by the relaxation time. Okay, and the title of the slide, to mix escape and then relax. To make it more precise... That was only if you have the product condition. No, okay, the, so, so, so the, the, what, what's written here is true in general. And uh, the clean version, when we fix alpha to be half, so we will consider heating times of sets of size at least half, uh, then the epsilon mixing time is close to heat half to epsilon and to heat half epsilon over two, but there is some time shift which depends on the relaxation time and log epsilon. And w under the product condition, we, we can just ignore those terms as long as epsilon does not tend to zero too quickly. And a more, a more refined version of this inequality allows us to consider a larger set than size half. And it tells us that the epsilon mixing time is at least, well, this I proved before. And this is well known and follows from two lines of linear algebra. Okay, again, some term uh, that involves the relaxation time and log of one over two epsilon. And uh, heat one minus epsilon over four. Okay, the same one minus epsilon over four is there. That minus is the plus on the right. Log epsilon is negative. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so up, to, up to small time shift, and here there is some small difference in the parameters, and also here, here we add epsilon, here we change epsilon a little bit. We see that heat capture, captures mix, T-mix quite well. And uh, what's more refined uh, about this equation is not only that we allow uh, uh, to consider a heating time of large sets, is that with a little bit of work, one can show that the right-hand side and the left-hand side are up to an absolute constant from each other, which is independent of the chain and of epsilon. But this requires some algebra. OK. Um, so we define the notion of it alpha cutoff to be the case that uh, it alpha epsilon minus it alpha one minus epsilon is little o of it alpha quarter for any epsilon between zero and a quarter. So in a sense, the main abstract result we have, uh, so this is what I said before about the condition C, that this in addition to the product condition implies cutoff. A uh, sequence exhibit cutoff if and only if it exhibit it alpha cutoff for some alpha between zero and one and the product condition holds. So this is in the case of reversible lazy Markov chains. So the case uh, alpha equal to a half essentially follows from the first inequality in the previous slides. One have to do a little bit more than that. And uh, noting that it al hit half is of order of the mixing time. And in practice, you have to do a bit more than that. And to recover the, the full equivalence here for general alpha, we show that under the product condition, if you have hit alpha for a certain alpha, then you actually have it beta, sorry, it alpha cutoff. You get it beta cutoff for any beta. And all of them occur uh, around the mixing time. So heat beta would be uh, of order t, would be a t mix one plus minus little of one. Uh, okay, so uh, now I want to explain the main ideas. I just need to, to give a few uh, definitions first. So for a function uh, f, from uh, the state space to R, we define PT of F to be, well, this is what you expect, but it's also the expectation of F of 
xt given that the chain started at x. Oh, this is bad. I, I, I already deleted that, <laughs> so there is no g. Uh, for any function f, define uh, the uh, e pi of f just to be the expectation of uh, f x0 if x0 is sampled according to pi and uh, uh, the two norm square of f just to be uh, e pi of f square. Um, and then the variance of g with respect to pi will just be the two norm square of g minus e pi of g. Uh, so the well-known L2 contraction lemma tells you that for any reversible, irreducible uh, Markov chain, uh, lazy, uh, and any indicator of a set, the variance of pt, the indicator, is at most e to the minus 2t over t rel. You said that if there is a cutoff for eta alpha, for some alpha, then it's true for any alpha, actually. Under the product condition. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. And th this is clearly not true in general? No. Uh, okay, the main tool we use is the uh, star's maximal inequality, which is uh, very similar to Stein's maximal inequality, apart from giving a sharp constant. And uh, it says that uh, for any irreducible, well, that's a partial statement. Star actually proved a much more general version. For any irreducible reversible Markov chain and any function f from omega to r, uh, so we define the maximal function f star to be just the supremum over all times of pk f of x, uh, supremum over all k in absolute value. And the statement is that the two norm square of f star is at most 8 uh, the two norm square of f. Okay, and it's, what's nice about this inequality uh, is that you have star appearing both in the statement and in the name of the inequality. So it's easy to remember. Yes, yes. That, that's the way I define the two norm. Okay. Okay, so the next two slides are the most important ones in the entire presentation. Uh, so I'm going to define an auxiliary set for each set A. Uh, I call it GSAM. It's the good set for A after time S within M standard deviation from stationarity. So more precisely, we define sigma s to be what we had before in the L2 contraction lemma. So that's by the L2 contraction lemma. And then a formal definition of GSAM is the collection of all states G, such that for any time uh, s tilde greater or equal than s, a PG s tilde of A minus pi of A in absolute value is at most M sigma s. If we want to get precision here to be at, uh, at most, at least epsilon precision, then we need to choose S to be the relaxation time times log M over e epsilon. And uh, we argue that the size of G is at least 1 minus uh, 8 over M square. Okay. So the proof is a one-liner. You just consider the function fs, uh, which is p of s indicator of a minus pi a. Then from the definition, uh, the complement of g is the collection of all states such that fs star of x is greater than m, the two norm of fs. And then we apply star's maximal inequality. So that's it. Okay, so how, how do we use that? Why, why, why is that good set so good? So fix some m, 
greater than square root 8. So I, I just want this to be a non-trivial bound. And the claim is that we can bound the two epsilon mixing time by hit 1 minus 8 over m square epsilon plus some time shift. That was s from before. So uh, the proof goes as following. Uh, just denote this as t. By the previous claim, we know that the size of g is at least 1 minus 8 over m square. So by the definition of t, we get that for any initial state x, the probability that we did not eat g by time t is at most epsilon, by the definition of heat, more precisely. OK, so uh, here choosing the worst x and a gives you equality. So the distance from stationarity time t plus s would be that. Well, this we can bound in two parts. One case is by considering the case that the good set was still not hit by time t. And on the case that the good set was hit by time t, then taking maximum over g and s tilde, we get that this is at most, OK, so there is a maximum missing here, uh, that plus that. Well. The fact that this is epsilon is already re written there. And the reason that this is at most epsilon follows from the definition of g. So to get that, formally, you just apply uh, the Markov property and condition on the heating time and the state in which g was hit. OK, so any question? Okay, so, so that, that essentially establish the, the, yeah, establishes a version of what I wrote before with the alpha equals half. But uh, playing with parameters, you, you can get anything. Uh, I mean, any alpha, really. Okay, so now talking about trees. Uh, so t uh, an arbitrary tree, finite. Uh, we consider a Markov chain on it, a lazy one, uh, which is just weighted nearest uh, neighbor random walk. So uh, by Kolmogorov cycle condition, every Markov chain on a tree is reversible. Uh, OK, so the question how to use our abstract characterization. So, how can we use the tree structure to determine what are the worst sets? Oh, an easier question would be, well, how do you do it for a birth and death chain? So I will redraw it. Luckily, I already have a drawing of a birth and death chain. So consider J, the first J, such that the set 1 up to J epsilon as pi measure uh, the maximal J such that this has pi measure at most epsilon. OK, so starting at 1, this is obviously the worst set to escape from up to picking the side. So it might be starting from n, some interval. OK, so for a tree, everything is very easy. But how do we generalize that? Oh, moreover, uh, oh, uh, yeah, for, for birth and death chain, sorry. Uh, if we look at pi condition on this set, then starting from this distribution, the chain mixes quickly. OK, this follows from several considerations. One of them is the L2 contraction. Another one is that 
uh, using some known facts, one can show that every set is hit quickly starting from this distribution. Okay, so this is pi condition on the set appearing here. Well, I'm arguing that uh, if the chain starts at x, then the chain will also mix quickly started from x. So a formal way to see it is comparing heating times compared to pi, right? Because by the Markov property, in order to heat a set on this side of the path, uh, the chain first has to reach x. In fact, it doesn't jump. Okay, so, so that, that's a way to, to use the birth and death structure. So we can do the same for trees. So that's intuition. <laughs> Uh, okay, so a few definitions. Uh, we call a vertex uh, O the central vertex. If each connected component of the tree, when we take that vertex out, uh, so this needs to be V, I'm sorry, uh, as stationary measure at most half. Uh, there can be at most two such vertices, but there's always at least one. We pick one and call it the root. So loosely speaking, uh, trees that satisfy the product conditions are just one with ones with some kind of global bias towards the center of mass, the central vertex. Formally, ones that the heating time of the central vertex is concentrated from a worst starting position. So given that description, a counterintuitive construction shows that one can construct such unweighted trees. That's due to Paris and Soucy. Uh, okay, so like in any tree, the root induces a partial order. Uh, so for any uh, vertex u, uh, this will denote the path from u to the root, I mean the unique uh, non-backtracking one, or sh shortest one. And f of u would be the parent of u. And then we say that u prime is smaller than u if it's on the path from u to the root. And then w of u would be the induced subroot at, at u. So here, the induced subroot at x is exactly this set. Okay? If, say, that's the root right here. Okay, is the definition clear? Not on the So if that's x and that's the central vertex, then everything right here from that vertex farther away from the root is the induced. That would be w of x, everything here. Uh, so we call a vertex x a beta vertex, a beta vertex, if uh, the Pi measure of the induced subtree at uh, x is at least beta. And uh, as before, for x, for the same reason, if you start at the beta vertex, you mix quickly. And I already gave that explanation for birth and death chain, so I'm going to skip it. Okay, so for any uh, state x, we can look at the nearest uh, by a beta vertex, which is an ancestor, ancestor of x. We denote it by y beta of x. And we argue that the uh, variance of the heating time of the nearest by beta vertex is at most Tyrell times T mix of order. Uh, so if you believe that, then what we get is that under the product condition, the standard deviation of that would be the geometric mean and hence the lit little o of the mixing time. And this will give us concentration. And I'm arguing that such concentration, so we already argued that if you start here, you mix quickly in little o of the mixing time. 
And I also argued that getting gear happens in a concentrated manner, and I'm arguing that this implies cutoff. So, can you draw a tree? I mean, this argument is very pictorial. So we argued that started from here, the chain mixes in little o of t mix. And we argued that getting gear is concentrated. Mm. Because you see, the, the equations are exactly the same. This isn't a coincidence. And we had the heating time, the valence was also there, TRL times T mix. And but you were insisting a couple of the particles. Well, I'm not saying that this is a proof, I'm just saying this is what's going on. Okay, so that's, that's the picture from any bad vertex x, you get concentration here. If you don't get concentration, it's only because you get from year to year too quickly anyway. And once you're here, you, you mix in little o a number of steps. And if you use these two arguments together, you get cutoff. So formally, one can take beta tending to 0 sufficiently not quickly to make that argument work. So in the birth and death chain, there is, there is a formula for heating times. So heating times can be written as sum of geometric variables. And Percy and, and Laurent so of course use that, and we use that. But here, we don't use a formula like that, but rather some direct calculation of the variance of the heating time, which also gives yes. the relaxation time. Which I'm going to sketch right now. Uh, so. The, the concentration followed from a claim about the variance. So now I'm going to sketch the, uh, the proof. So it's, it's enough uh, to show actually the bound in which we have here the expectation rather than the mixing time. Because this, this expectation could be at most being generous twice the mixing time. That, that, that's easy to show. OK. but. Actually, this eating time consists of a lot of independent crossing time of edges. So if this is x0, this is x1, x2, then getting from year to year is just like the time it took you to get from year to year. And then the time, once you got to year, it took you to cross this edge, and so on. But by the Markov property, this crossing time of edges is just the sum of independent random variable. And so this is the, the crossing time of the edge xi minus 1 xi. Uh, so if we want to bound the variance, it's enough to get a bound on the second moment of the individual crossing time of the edges. And then actually using known results and some Second order cuts formula estimate gives you that the second moment of the time it takes you to cross from y to its parent is at most four times the expected crossing time of the edge times the relaxation times time, sorry, and then summing what we get, we recover the claim. So yes, yeah, so it's simple. Um, okay. So a few concluding remark is that one can fix the initial starting distribution and then everything still works. But now you need to define mixing with respect to that initial distribution and heating with respect to it. Uh, so for fixed starting distribution, one can show that cutoff is equivalent to 
concentration of heating time of war set in expectation, the notion considered previously by Perez, Susi, and Oliveira. But this is not true in general if you don't fix your starting position uh, distribution. So we have a counterexample. Uh, so laziness with probability one half is not, we don't really use it that strongly. So it's enough to have the condition that the spectral gap is a smaller equal than one minus the absolute value of the smallest eigenvalue. That's essentially all we use. And yeah, so, so essentially you, 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 it's enough to, to make a lazy step once every relaxation time number of steps to completely avoid periodicity issues. Please. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip a few things. Forgive me. So I said earlier that the tree assumption can be relaxed. I'm going to make it more precise right now. Uh, so previously, uh, uh, the concentration of heating time in the work of uh, Ding, Lubetsky, and Perez used some uh, representation of heating time results of McGregor and Carlin that is very specific to birth and death chains, and hence everything was very fragile. Uh, apart from that, the, the birth and death structure was used uh, in other places. And uh, we actually can relax the tree structure assumption just to assume that there is some auxiliary tree, but the chain can actually move uh, bounded, uh, to bounded distances along the tree, okay, under some mild technical assumption. Uh, so for instance, um, the mild technical assumption, a weaker sufficient condition is saying that to any neighbor of the tree, there is some probability, so p x y bigger than delta for any x neighbor of y in the tree, and p x y equals zero if the distance with respect to the tree between x and y is bigger than some fixed number r. So that's a sufficient condition. It's not quite the condition we give. So why is it if I add an edge, the argument should somehow break? Oh, the, the existing argument yes. that I presented. Exactly. Yeah, one, we, the, the one about trees. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we define an abstract class of chains that have... No, no, no. Where, where would the argument break if I add an edge to the graph? To go? If but, I jump, let's say, just skips of two. It has to break because of all this. Oh, problems. what's the counterexample? So, uh, uh, where... The variance. The variance. The variance. The variance. But while this, this argument, why, why was... It didn't seem so fragile that if you add... The variance of the heating time was written as a sum of variances along the edges. So Aldous's Al example. Is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, if you have a shortcut to the center, it ruins so sh Should I show Aldous' example again, or no, 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 Yuval? No, 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 it's fine. Yeah. I'm just asking yeah. where the proof would break, that's it. Yeah. Uh, OK, open problems. Uh, so what can be said about the geometry of the war sets in some interesting examples? So notice that in the tree case, we didn't really identify and say this particular set is worse, but we found a collection that of sets among which one of them would be worse. So that's more or less what I'm looking for. And say, assuming transitivity or some monotonicity. So uh, one question can be uh, if F2 uh, satisfied PF2 is lambda 2F2, so it's an eigenvalue, uh, eigenfunction of the largest uh, eigenvalue. Uh, is it true that the worst set in transitive graphs can be written like that for a certain c? So c will be c of epsilon, and this will have pi measure epsilon, roughly. So this will imply a cutoff in, in several interesting examples. Another question would be, can we approximate a uh, heating time of worst sets by escaping time of balls in transitive graphs. And we really have freedom 
uh, that we consider balls of pi measure epsilon, but we're trying to approximate much smaller sets. And yeah, I'll, I'll stop here. What was the general condition in terms of the... Uh, to have uh, it alpha cutoff, that uh, essentially that a worse set in some sense, it, its eating time is concentrated. And usually expectation w would catch it. At least if you fix your starting state, then cutoff with respect to that starting state is like having concentration of heating time for a set whose expectation is worse, expected heating time is worse for that starting state. What, what does that mean? <laughs> fix. There exists a fix. The, the set that is the hardest to hit. It's hitting time. There exists a set with respect to this specific time. Because you want to fix. Oh, time. so so now now we're talking about expectation. I said if you yeah, fix, you fix the time that you no, want to. Don't fix the time. Look at the set which, which okay. maximizes the expected hitting time. Okay. For a given size, say a given time, and ask that the hit, its hitting time as a random variable be concentrated. Okay, there, there are some subtleties and, and we can discuss it uh, offline. Okay. Other questions? So, is this condition implied by some kind of hyperbolicity? I don't know, some fact about triangles being thin or something? I, I was told to look into that by somebody. Well, I guess if you take a hyperbolic manifold so, and you take a net and so this condition is too strong, it's not implied by hyperbolicity, but probably hyperbolicity should be enough. Oh, so, so, so let's talk about it because our condition is much milder than that. Okay, that's just something that you can write in less than 10 sentences. I there is a, what's the trade-off between the mildness and the length of the, <laughs> that you have, you can write it? In what sense trade-off? One over, one over eight, or? What are you trying to compensate for? Okay, let's thank uh, the other thing again.